All right, so with a lot of the lower end graphics cards now making their way to announcements, I would say store shelves and maybe your computers, but let's face it, we know that's not happening. I bet that's what I sound like. <laughs> <laughs> they're not making their way to your systems or your retail shelves or your e-tailers warehouses because they're <laughs> gone already. But we're gonna talk about the 60 series graphics cards and more importantly, uh, now with the 6700 XT announcement, we're gonna talk about RAM and the amount of GP RAM that's available on these cards and whether or not it's a gimmick, why there's an, uh, as much as there is, and is it a figure that you really need to consider while you're shopping, hypothetically, for your new graphics cards next year. The all-new 5000D mid-tower airflow case from Corsair features an optimized front panel for maximum ventilation, while the integrated cable management and tempered glass side panel means you can show off more of your components and not your cable mess. To see the full list of specs and to learn more about the 5000D's flexible fan mounting options perfect for both air cooling and water cooling enthusiasts, follow the sponsored link in the description below. All right, so I don't have a 6700 XT here yet, but one of the things that you probably noticed with AMD is almost every one of their graphics cards in the 6000 series just has 16 gigabytes of VRAM. Now, AMD in the past would give you dual SKUs for each card. Let's say you had a 5700 XT. Uh, I believe this was actually still the case. Hypothetical, okay, fine, RX 480. You could get an RX 480 four gigabyte or an RX 480 eight gigabyte. All of the numbers were the same in terms of the stream processors and uh, ROPs and all that. The only difference was the amount of RAM on it. But as we move forward now, it's really started to get really weird in the, like I call that, that, that general market, which being the 60 series cards for NVIDIA and the lower AMD ones. The names are all kind of weird now, right? Let's talk about RAM. So the 3060 has 12 gigabytes of VRAM, which made a lot of people confused, myself included, as to why they would put 12 gigabytes, giga, I almost said gigarams, 12 gigarams on a 3060 and eight gigabytes on a 3060 Ti. The 2060, if you recall, had six gigabytes of VRAM. But the reason why I call this extremely confusing is if we go back to the 10 series, which is what NVIDIA is actually comparing all the 3060 numbers to because they never compare it to the previous gen. They always compare it to the gen before that because that puts you closer to about a four year cycle, which a lot of people tend to upgrade every four to five years. So you can kind of see what the every other generation improvement is, which is affecting more people than annual upgrades. This, was the GeForce GTX 1060. This was the first one that had launched. This is a six gigabyte card as well. Then they came out with a cheaper version, which was also a GTX 1060, but this is a three gigabyte card. But don't be fooled, we already did a video calling this one out. It had less CUDA cores and less everything, making it not really a 1060 and just a really shady marketing move from NVIDIA on this one. But three gigabytes of VRAM, as you guys know today, would absolutely not cut it. So if that's the case, why does the 3060 have 12 gigabytes of VRAM and the 3080 has 10 gigabytes of VRAM. Well, the way that the RAM is actually allocated has everything to do with the bus width. You got 128-bit bus, you have 192-bit bus, 384, and something we haven't seen in a long time, 512. And you'll notice that these are increments, right? The reason why it has 12 gigabytes of VRAM is because it would have had to have been stuck with either six or 12 because of the 192-bit bus. They wanted to go with a wider bus, giving it uh, more memory performance and also allowing them to be able to go with a number higher than six. If they were gonna go with either a four or an eight gigabyte variant, they would have had to re reduce the memory bus width down to 128 gig uh, gigabits. Wow, 128 bits, that's a lot. Gigabits, is, that's a lot of bits. They would have had to drop it down to a 128 bit bus, which would have then allowed them to be able to run eight gigabytes of VRAM. But with a narrower memory bus, they would have had lesser performance as well. But I just wanted to kind of respond to that real quick uh, because it is a response I received from NVIDIA when I talked about it being uh, just a, a memory allocation circle jerk between AMD and NVIDIA and who has the most RAM. We know AMD has the most RAM, but one of the things for today's video is actually gonna be how does that RAM actually affect your gaming experience? We know that six gigabytes of VRAM these days in 2021 with modern titles is probably not gonna cut it which means it makes sense that they went with the 12 gigabits or gigabytes versus the six gigabytes if that's the uh, limitations they were gonna have on the 192-bit bus. See, when it comes to memory performance, it's not just how much of it do you have. That's just the size of the container. 
Now imagine the size of the container has an opening at the top and how fast that memory can get in and out of it is gonna depend on two things. One, the size of the opening being your bus width and then two, how fast that information can get in and out of that bucket being your pump speed or in this case, the memory speed itself. So we have faster memory now, a bigger opening and a bigger container, which theoretically is gonna give you much better performance than if you had a smaller container with a smaller opening with the same size pump. And when I say same size, same size pump, it's all GDDR6, which is gonna give you very fast speeds. But if the fast speed is filling a smaller container that takes longer for it to cycle, then, that can, then you can see there why those three figures can start to play in as to why they chose 12 gigabytes on the 3060. Uh, the reason why AMD is pretty much putting 16 gigabytes in everything is because they're kind of using the same bus for everything. So I think it's a little bit simpler over there, but they're not directly comparison apples to apples in the architecture. That's something we already know. So what we're gonna do is we've got our 3060 loaded up on our test bench here. And the reason why I'm doing these tests right now to show you, a lot of people get really hung up on the amount of VRAM that's in a card on making their buying choice. If they, and the reason why I even brought up these 10 series cards is because if you were sitting here, let's say hypothetically these are 3060 cards and you go, oh, I could save some money by going with a less, lesser amount of card, but it's all the same. Well, you're gonna see right now that although we have 12 gigabytes on a 3060, some titles are not gonna utilize anywhere near that and some might get somewhat near there. But what you're gonna find on the 3060 as well is that you have a bit of a surplus when it comes to the amount of memory. One other thing I wanna point out is even the 10 gigabytes on the 3080, unless we're doing 4K gaming with high resolution texture packs on super modern titles, do we see it go anywhere near the 10 gigabytes of VRAM? It's, uh, it's nice to have, remember it is GDDR6X, which means it's gonna be a faster memory. And it's not only how big is the container and how big is the opening, how big is your pump, which is the speed, um, the pump matters as well. You have the biggest opening and the biggest container, and if you have a slow, dribbly pump, it's still gonna suck, right? Use that metaphor however you want. All right, so what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna use Afterburner here to kind of show you guys some specs on what's happening with the card. Uh, that way we can sort of um, give you guys some real world experience here, or, or I guess examples of what's happening. What we're looking at here is a couple of different things. This is our GPU temperature. That's the usage of our GPU. This is Rise of the Tomb Raider. The menu is actually a 3D rendered item, which is why it's at 100%. This is our core clock. This is our memory usage in megabytes. Now remember, this is a 12 gigabyte card. So as you can see in the menu, we're only using just under two gigabytes. We're gonna change a couple settings here. Uh, I'm starting with some older titles. We'll move, our, we'll move our way to some of the newer, more demanding titles like um, Borderlands 3, stuff like that, to see if we can't get our usage to go anywhere near the 12 gigabytes. Because what I'm trying to show you here actually is that Eight gigs is really the sweet spot. And anything above eight gigabytes is pretty much gonna be overkill, which to be honest, I'd rather have more memory than I need because having not enough memory means you have to lower either your resolutions or your settings to get your uh, memory under control. Now, one of the biggest factors of the amount of memory that you use are not just the settings, but the resolution at which you are applying those settings to. Specifically stuff like MSAA or any sort of anti-aliasing that is uh, any sort of scaling anti-aliasing. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the settings here. This particular test, we have a custom preset. Everything is pretty much as high as it'll go. The resolution which we're running here is 1080p. Yes, this is an ultra wide panel. You can see the black bars. We have it set to actual 1080p. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and set this to 1440 right now because I'm curious to even sitting in the menu. Yeah, so even in the menu, we saw about a 200 megabyte jump in terms of usage. But I feel a lot of people that are gonna be running 60 series cards are probably gonna be on a 1080p or 1440p panel, which is perfectly fine. Um, I'm gonna run this up to SSAA or super sampling anti-aliasing 4X. And you can see that added just a little bit of that. We're almost at 2,400 megabytes of usage. Again, just in the menu. Now, if we jump this up to 1440, look at that, almost three gigabytes of VRAM. Now, what's funny is this title existed at the time the, 30, the 1063 gig did. As you can see, we're using almost a full amount of frame buffer in this graphics card in the damn menu. So you can see why we were pretty mad about the three gig ever even existing back in 2016, 2017. One thing you might notice too is as the game is loading, you're seeing the VRAM actually start to load as well. Yes, this is the very beginning of the game, but as you can see, we're already at six gigabytes of VRAM. So had they chosen going with the six gigabyte option rather than 12 gigabyte, you could see how in an older title like this, even in 1080p without maxing out things like anti-aliasing, 
we would already be pretty damn close to that. But one thing to keep in mind when it comes to memory though, is just like your system memory, is it's not gonna just automatically climb to whatever arbitrary number it wants to pull. The API knows how much v uh, VRAM is available to it, and it's gonna dynamically start to adjust things uh, to try and keep things underneath where it would crash. If it goes beyond the available VRAM, it's going to crash. So the biggest sign you're gonna notice of not having enough VRAM is gonna be major stutters, major pauses in your game, because what's effectively happening here is the video card's gonna start sharing memory with the system. Now having to go through the PCIe bus to the system memory, which is significantly slower than VRAM, and then storing that information and then accessing it again through system memory rather than to the disk, uh, is what those pauses are. You're actually seeing the pause of that transfer taking place. And let's face it, you'd rather have it take place on the graphics card natively. What's funny is the way that it's it's so locked in right there at that 6119. It's not really like, it's not moving even one megabyte. <laughs> while, while we were loading the game, every single texture file, every uh, whatever the game engine needs, oh, we went up one is stored into the VRAM. And so having enough VRAM available to it, or what you've here referred to as a buffer, is obviously very important. So let's just go to 2X. So that was a couple hundred megabytes, 4X. This is the highest setting we have for this title, which again, remember, is like five years old now at this point, almost five years old. So we're up at just under seven gigs. So we're only using, I mean, about 65% of our RAM which is good. Um, again, 1440p on a 60 series card, getting us probably around 60 FPS So here, if I had to make a guess. Um, not terrible. So as you can see, you're getting way more uh, RAM than you need in this particular title. But again, this is not that new of a title. Games like this that have these areas that load, as you saw when we were loading the game, it loads in everything into VRAM as much as it can. The API goes, oh, we got 12 gigs available to us. We only need about 7,500 to get this done. We'll just load it all. That way it's not having to load anything while you're playing. However, sandbox games, uh, ga like battle royale type games that have very big worlds, um, Tom Clancy type games that have very big explore, to explore areas. As you move through the map, various areas of the map are gonna load as you're going. So if you had enough VRAM to load as much in there as possible and have it be fast enough to where it can do it while you're gaming without causing any sort of stutters, that's where you'll start to notice having too little of a VRAM buffer can really start to affect your gameplay experience. All right, so this is Borderlands 3. This is just the opening tutorial mission. It's not using that much VRAM, actually. Phil and I both expected to use more VRAM than that. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just switch it to 1440 in the middle of this gameplay. Uh, we've been kind of keeping an eye on it and it hasn't really even tried to load more memory. It's just really surprising us to be honest. So in 1440p, I hardly used any more. Nope. So this is just one of those titles that doesn't seem to really be all that demanding, at least when it comes to VRAM. So we were using just under 4,600 megabytes. Um, in the actual game, at least in the opening part, I think it might get a little bit more demanding, but I think given how low that number is right there, I think it's safe to say we're probably not gonna get anywhere near even eight gigabytes in the benchmark. All right, so it jumped up to 5140, uh, but again, it's not changing at all during the test because, well, there it is right there. We're thinking that the benchmark here might be loading elements from all over the game into this one area, and that's one of the reasons why you're seeing the the actual number increase. But remember, this is 1440p, which is gonna be, for this card and this resolution, the biggest uh, amount of demand you're gonna see for memory in this particular title, not even using half of the amount of VRAM that is available on this graphics card. So again, showing pretty promising numbers that if this was an eight gigabyte card, that there would be plenty of VRAM even at eight gigs. All right, so we're using Wildlands now because it's more of a sandbox world, but you can see we're getting an obvious glitch here with our on-screen display as it's loading um, clearly. It's funny, you can actually see it loading as it goes. It's so neat to watch. Okay, so as you can see, again, very low memory usage. <laughs> Just by telling you, put your freaking guns away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, too many civilian casualties. Okay, I was expecting it to use more VRAM than this. Oh God! Ah! Oh God! Ah! Hola, piggy. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you want bacon? 
<laughs> Express bacon. This, looks like, this is, looks like my room when I was in high school. All right, so I guess Wildlands is not one of those titles that really has an issue. All right, so this is Control, but DLSS is on. And the reason why I have it on is the fact that the DLSS has to fit in the frame bumper, frame bumper? Frame buffer as well. I'm not very far into the game, but look, here we are again, still right around that 4,000, 4,500 mark. As the fight's going on though, the, the buffer usage is like kind of going upside. All right, so let's do the fight again in 1440p and see if we go above 5100. So what I did right now is I actually turned off DL, turned off, turned off, no, turned off DLSS so I could run it at the native 1440p. That last run actually was 1440p, uh, but now we don't have DLSS on. So there's a little bit of an FPS hit, but as you can see, not too much has changed so yeah, FPS has definitely suffered a little bit. We're at uh, just about 50% of our VRAM usage here. Yeah, not even 50% not even of our VRAM usage. So if there is anything that I wanted you guys to kind of learn or take away from this video, it's just the fact that VRAM count is only one portion of what makes a good graphics card a good graphics card. Now there's no doubt the 3060 is a very fast graphics card. It's the fastest 60 series card we've ever seen. Um, it's got more CUDA cores, it's got more RT cores, more tensor cores, it's got DLSS, it's got ray tracing capabilities. You can see 1440p in a game like Control. Uh, you couldn't see the FPS, I could tell you it was running at least 60 FPS. And, and we're not even using half of our frame buffer, at least in the titles that we showed here. Now, new games like Watch Dogs Legion uh, or Watch Dog Legions, we're seeing reports of it being like more like eight gigabytes, closer to eight gigabytes of VRAM. Um, Wolfenstein Youngblood can see as much as like eight or nine gigabytes of VRAM, which shows the obvious reason as to at least why brands like AMD and Nvidia are using more than eight gigabytes on their newer cards, um, given. As titles become more demanding, uh, resolutions get pushed higher. Remember, that's another thing to keep in mind. People are running higher resolution panels now, more people than ever are running 1440p. It's quickly catching up and going to surpass 1080p in the next couple of years in terms of the dominant panel resolution. Um, but don't get caught up in just that number. I've seen people say, well, this card's better because it has 16 gigs of VRAM. But again, if it's 16 gigs of VRAM and it's slow RAM, uh, then you're obviously gonna have a problem there as well. There's, there's just more to it. The amount of VRAM, what is the bus width, what is the speed of the RAM, and then can the core utilize that RAM? The, the, it's, it's easy to get caught up in some of these numbers and not understanding the way that they all work together as a system. And I think what we've shown right here is that uh, eight gigabytes of VRAM is truly the sweet spot. But one of the things you can keep in mind with the amount of RAM that's on graphics cards today is it's about future compatibility. Because if you are running a, a four or five year old graphics card, like a 10 series, 1060, even a 6G, you can see some of these titles would start really leveraging that. Even though the fact that the core itself wouldn't be strong enough to necessarily run these titles in 1440p to where you would even be able to utilize that level of frame buffer, the core speed itself would definitely feel more dated than the VRAM. But having a fast core like you have on these new, these new graphics cards, giving you higher frame buffer available will make you that much more relevant farther into the future so you can play newer titles as the card starts to age before feeling like you have to upgrade your video card. So if this video has proved or served any sort of purpose, it's hopefully showing you that there's more to VRAM than just the amount of it. Um, but we have a, a question for you guys. What are some titles that you have seen that are just extremely dependent on the amount of VRAM in your graphics card? Not system RAM, but VRAM heavy. So sound off in the comments below what some of those titles are, the resolutions and the settings and stuff. That way we can try and recreate some of those uh, scenarios where we can do some future testing ourselves. And if, if you have any other questions about your system, uh, whether it be system RAM, CPU or GPU, where you'd like us to do more videos like this, where we kind of go in depth a little more, showing you guys the way certain things work, uh, we would like you guys to sound off with the way you think uh, and the topics that you think we should cover. So as always, everyone, thanks for watching and we will see you in the next one. No one likes you anymore, 3G card. 800 bucks. You guys, $800 if you want to sound off down below. <laughs>